welcome to another Fusion Friday. This week we're going to cover how to build a machine sim from scratch to include organizing your file and actually setting up your machine config and kinematics and how you could test that out. Let's go ahead and jump into this. As you can see, I have the model open already and we've already imported it and got it all set up. So the first thing I like to do with my machine sim is just check over my components and make sure everything seems okay. It looks like Haas did a really good job with this one with giving us the base, a few of the other components all broke out, our B and C axis, everything and anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by reorganizing this file a little more simple. So we're gonna go ahead and say create new component. I don't want to activate this, but I like to just break this out as a base. We're gonna do another component here. Again, we don't want that active. Enclosure. Add in our X, Y, and Z. Give me a few more minutes here. And there's our Z axis. And then it looks like we have a B and a C. So let's go ahead and add those last two, B axis and C axis. So once you get your breakdown on all of the different axes or basically buckets that we're gonna put things into, we need to now organize based on motion. So let's start with the simplest and let's just get rid of the enclosure, right? So I'm gonna take the enclosure, I'm gonna drag it down and I'm gonna drop it in that enclosure component. A little trick here is if I turn off that level while I'm working, you can see how I can actually hide the enclosure as needed or see if maybe there's things inside of that enclosure that we do where you don't want to bring through. So in this case, it was looking like maybe we're missing the back wall here, but that's not the case on this machine. Another kind of trick is, is if you're seeing something that you wanna move, if you actually click it with your mouse and then right click find in browser, what's gonna happen is it's gonna find that component and expand it all the way down to the body for you. So we could take this entire cab cool. Again, that's part of our enclosure. We do have these shelves on the front. So that convenience pack, again, that's all part of my external enclosure, our chip chute. And as you're gonna see is we're starting to drag and drop this stuff and get it placed and it's gonna disappear more and more. A few other things that we may not need here is our tool tr arm at low position, uh, maybe the tool carousel inside of itself, we're not really in need of this for our machine sim. So let's go ahead and grab those couple of components there again. And let's go ahead and put that all inside the enclosure. So moving on to our next item, right? So now we have our base. Maybe that's the next thing I start with. So again, we want to put the base in the base component. And then from there, there's actually these feet are separate from everything. So the pads that the machine sips on, that's again, part of our base. Once again, we just sit here and we organize out our file. So we have our bridge here. So that is also actually a part of our base. So if you're curious about this, is this is a part of the actual casting or a piece to the assembly, but also this is where our X axis resides. So we would want the bridge to be a part of the base. We would then go down the list even more. So now this is where we get into our axis, right? So our wedge, is gonna be our X axis left and right. So let's put our X or our wedge in our X. We have our saddle, which is our Y. And just down the list again. So we have our spindle head. This is gonna be our Z axis. And again, I'm gonna turn these off. So as we place stuff, it disappears and we get further and further down into what we're doing. So again, we have our C axis. And in this case, we have our B axis first. Let's put our B axis in our B axis location. And then we have our C axis. And then we have our P coolant and our P coolant is also gonna go on our Z axis. So at this point, we've organized everything, including the base, and we're stuck with nothing left inside of our file. And the reason for this is, is this organization is gonna play out much nicer for us later when we start to actually add our machine configuration. Our next step is going to be the fact that I like to rigid group my entire assembly together so nothing gets moved based on the component method. And to show you kind of an example here is as right now I can kind of click and drag and break everything down. And this is very annoying in the event that you don't want anything to move. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a rigid group 
And the trick to the rigid group is, is I'm actually going to grab these components, my first and my last. But before I click my last one, I'm going to hold my shift key so I can grab them all in one shot and hit OK. So the reason why I don't want to rigid group the top level here is because I still need to position myself where my origin is. And in this case, I already have my origin in position. If I wasn't perfectly in position, I would do a joint. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do basically a to and a from. So let's go ahead and pick our first point of reference and our second. And as you can see, that little disc slides over. That blue line, that long blue line signifies my Z up and my X to the right. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And you can see how my entire assembly comes over and snaps to that position. And now we are set where any of our jigs and fixtures are going to mount right there. I also have my X, Y, Z orientation correct. In the event that you skip this step, don't worry, because in the manufacturer workspace, when we use Machine Builder, you can actually set whatever rotation or whatever directions you want. Let's jump over there and take a look. Okay, so now I switch from the design to the manufacturer workspace. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Utilities, and we're going to go into the Machine Builder. And inside the Machine Builder, this is where we're actually going to build our machine. So I'm going to go ahead and click Select Machine. And then it's going to prompt me, do I want to use a recent machine or do I want to build a brand new machine? As you guys can see, I've already built this out. So let's go ahead and build a new one from scratch and see how that works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the little plus sign. We're going to do a milling machine in this case. I need to bring this window in and let's go ahead and name this. So this is our Haas UMC 350. And just to keep these separate, let's go ahead and call this the SS model. Again, this is just a five axis Haas UMC 350 SS. So now that we got our naming convention down, we can go ahead and walk through this. So again, is based on capabilities in the event that we added the machine and we said turning by accident, we could always swap that out. Again, if you have a mill turn machine or a laser, you could build those inside of Fusion currently. The only thing you can't do is machine sim. So. Keeping it further down, I know this machine can hold up to 200 tool offsets. Uh, again, this is tool offsets. This isn't necessarily the number of tools in pockets. So every machine is different because you can call a different tool to a different pocket. A lot of this motion and everything else, I tend to not fill out unless I absolutely need to. Again, getting down into the kinematics, this is the most important part. This is where we're going to tell the software, how is my machine going to act? And the easiest way to think about something like this is to always start from your base and kind of work your way outwards and set your axes one off another. So a good example here is, as you can see, I have nothing static right now. So let's go ahead and hit the plus and let's add my static part. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag this X down and get it out of the same level. So again, is in a normal machine, let me get this reorganized a little bit for everybody here. We may have the head that's static and then the X, Y, and Z move, things like that. So again, I'm going to drag this down just a little further because I like to put the head in a different location. So let's start with the very, very basics here. On our machine, let me think about it. Here we go. This is what we're going to do. We're actually going to hit OK on that SS model. And we're going to look at that menu just a little different way so that we can actually get an idea of what's going on. So again, it's based on kinematics. And all I did was I clicked that little gear button next to the select machine. And that gear button allows me to get back into the kinematics and close out my machine library. But we know this is our base and our casting right here. But our Y axis runs along this direction. And our X axis actually sits up here and runs left and right. So that being said is our X and our Y both sit on our static. So again is I'm gonna bring my static to the top and then I'm gonna bring my X axis and my Y axis all the way to the bottom. I also know at a quick glance, the table feature actually sits on the X axis and the spindle actually spits on the Y. So here's our head on the X. Here's our table going on to the Y. And again, we're going to add that Z axis to where it's positioned. 
We think to ourselves the Z runs up and down, but it's mounted to the X, and the X is mounted to the base. Again, we could take our Z, we place our Z between the head and the X, and the reason is is because our spindle Z X base, right? Now, on our lower Y axis, our Y axis has a B and a C axis mounted to it. So we need to add those in. So what I like to do is I like to click my Y axis, hit my little plus sign and say add rotary axis. And this is a B and C machine. So we're gonna go ahead and label our B. And then we're gonna add another rotary and this rotary is gonna be C. And just like so, we have set the kinematics of this machine. Again, is always kind of working backwards or forwards. The table right here, is mounted to our C axis. And again, that's because it's gonna spin like a pizza dish, right? Which is then mounted to our B axis that I like to think of like a coin flip. And then that is mounted onto our Y axis. And then our Y axis is mounted to our static or our base. In the case of this, I like to just relabel this as base. It makes it a little easier to understand later. Again, we confirm our X axis, our Y or our X, Z and head. So again, head, Z, X axis, head, Z, X axis. If your B or your X axis has any limits, this is where you can actually plug this in. For example, I want to limit my B axis to maybe negative 120 to 120. I don't want it to spin fully upside down if the machine is not capable of it. My C axis might actually be unlimited because it's just gonna rotate around my part. One thing I did tell you guys is if you didn't do that joint and align your X, Y, Z position like I did, this is where we could actually say in our orientation, what axis is it rotating around? This axis here is based on your world coordinates position. Just keep that in mind for all of you is, in this case, my C axis would rotate around Z axis because my Z axis is pointed up right now. If your X axis is up, you're gonna say around X. So our next step is, is to grab a post processor. This is a Haas machine. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Haas post. So here's my next gen control post. Based on multi-axis, again, this is gonna be settings all on your machine, how much you're gonna get into detail on that. Again, is I like to keep a lot of stuff default when I first build out my machine, because I really wanna make sure that it works before I go back and add deluxe features. So we go ahead and hit OK, and we kind of move down our list. In this case, you could move components. We don't need to move the components. Our model actually came in exactly where we want it or in what I would assume is the home position. And we're just going to now add our axes to our catamatics. So again, we're going to say machine, set up machine model, and then we're going to expand out our design tree over here on the left. So the first thing it's asking me, where is your tool going to sit? Well, we're going to put a tool in the spindle, of course. Where is your part going to sit? I'm going to go ahead and put my part right here on the table. And then we're going to walk down and set everything from there. So next is my x-axis. I go over here to my design tree. I hit x-axis. My z-axis, again, this is why we organized everything to make our life easy, is so that we could very quickly go through and pick these items. So again, there's my static, which is my base. I need my Y axis. And now we're getting into our B and our C axis. So here's my B axis. The additional option I have to pick for my rotary axis is I need something to rotate around. One nice thing is here is if I get on this face, you're gonna notice that it gives me that little plus sign down there in the center. That means I am center of more or less these arcs around the outside. Another thing, if I just move my mouse inwards without holding anything, I can always find a center of rotation based on my model, or you may need to create one in the design tree. I lucked out on here that that is center of rotation for B. Again, I'm gonna go now pick my C axis from my design tree, and my center of rotation again is, I like to just continuously use that center pin or center location on my rotary. So once you get all of these selected, let's go ahead and hit OK. What this is going to allow us to do as a final level is we're going to go ahead and preview our machine motion. And if we start to slide these around, you're going to notice my x-axis runs along x just like I want it. 
My Z is up and down. My Y axis, which is that lower table, runs in and out. And then we have my B axis, which swings, again, kind of like a coin flip. And because I did put those 120 limits in there, super neat that you could see we could only go 120 and 120. My last and final thing will be my C axis. Again, I can spin that C axis around based on what I need. So again, we'll go ahead and close that and we'll save this. And now let's go ahead and jump over and give this a test run on one of our parts. All right, so we built our machine sim. I have my part file open. Let's test it and see what happens. So again, we're gonna go to our setup. We're gonna go ahead and hit edit. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and select our machine. Again, based on where my machine is stored, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that UMC 350. We're gonna give this a second here to load the model. And then we're gonna go to our part position and make sure our part looks good. Granted, in the real world, we would have our jig and our fixture and everything designed. I'm just gonna place my part here on that actual machine. And I'm gonna keep it very simply two inches above. So let's do our simulate with machine now. And what we're looking for is just to make sure that everything is clearing the way it should be. So as you can see here, we have our actual machine. We're tilted to the side for this side drilling profile. We're actually gonna drill our five holes. We're gonna go back, rotate 180 degrees and drill our other five holes. So it looks like everything is working and functioning just fine. So at this point, as you guys can see, it's very simple to build out a machine sim inside of Fusion. We, as always at NextGen, appreciate you guys showing up on Fridays to watch these videos or watching them over the weekend. Everybody else, have a great weekend. Take that time off as needed. If you're working any time over the weekend, hopefully you're getting that overtime.